we made a decision. We're going to buy a boat and we're going to go around the world. We've never sailed. Sailed one time. Renee booked a deal two or three weeks ago on a boat, and that's what re-sparked everything. But it's come down to a quality of life issue. Is I'm not getting younger. My kids are getting older. And I got about four, five, six years left with my kids before they're all growing up and chasing their own dreams. Everybody's going to think I'm crazy. We're going to give all this up for a, a simpler life. What are you the most scared of? The most scared of um, giving up before we ever get out. <laughs> Not actually making it on the water. We either run out of money or run out of energy. But that's not going to happen. It's typically a two-day event to get all the way through the canal. Each ship that passes through the canal must have a transit advisor on board. Reynaldo arrived around 4 p.m. and helped us get rafted up with Elysian and ready to pass through the first set of locks. Four competent line handlers are required on each boat, and since Elysian has eight folks on board, they had plenty. Finn counted as our fourth line handler, even though Jack and Anna did most of the work. Once our boats are safely tied together, we begin the two hour long journey through the first three locks. Jack and Anna took a line handling job for another boat prior to our transit to get reacquainted with the procedures and to make a little money. A line handler typically charges around a hundred US dollars for a complete transit through the canal, plus transportation funds for the ride back. Wiz was rafted up to a small monohull and once they pulled in behind us, the gates were shut and the water began to rise. It takes about 10 minutes for the lock to fill completely and then we move on. The doors close and the water goes up. No, the gates close. The boats come in. They get the monkey line, monkey fist, and then they go in. The goats, the do goats, the <laughs> the gates close and then it fills up with water. 
and then we go into the next lock. And it, yeah, it lifts the boats up. And then the water from the other side, whenever these gates close, the water goes down for the next boats to come in. Yeah. And we do the entire thing again two more times. We file in, the gates shut, the water rises. Do you think it's harder to cat them? We sure take up more space. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Since it's your second time, I think it's a little easier. Yeah, it's not as stressful. Yeah. And that's the first set of locks. Hey. After casting off from Elysian, we motor out across Gatun Lake, where we tie to a mooring for the night. Three more locks again tomorrow, and we'll be in the Pacific Ocean. Remember. How are you doing, Keith? Ricky, right? You know, yeah, yeah. Ricky. Yeah. Yeah. Ricky, which are we? Uh, Ricky. Same, they call me home. All right. So, how was the night? Nice? Was good? Awesome. 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 Great. Well, I don't know. So, Captain, uh, I already spoke with Jeff. I yeah. told him he's a vice yeah. arriving from Colon. He's got duty time at Ferry. It's yeah. uh, quarter to nine, so. He's a little bit late. He should arrive at night, but we need to go. Okay. We need to go. So I told Jeff uh, he can be drifting or send a long line to the buoy, uh, but we need to cast off with him. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna cast off Jeff, cast off ourselves from the buoy, and then get on the way. Okay. Our new transit advisor for the day was Ricardo, who informed us that Elysian's advisor was running late, and we needed to cast off and get going. So this time we'd be rafting up with Wiz and a local tour boat. The motor across the lake and all the way to the last set of locks is about 28 miles and took about four hours. The cost to cross the canal is based on boat length, so it cost us around 3,000 US dollars for our 58 foot cat. But it was actually about the same price as it was to cross in our old 55 foot monohull. Okay, this ferry is going to raft up to this wall on the inside of this lock. And then we're gonna raft up to him, and then Wiz is gonna raft up to us, and then they're gonna lower us down. Okay. And then we will, us and Wiz will stay together. We'll detach from the ferry once we're all the way down. He'll go into the lake, we'll all go through the lake. Wiz will stay with us in the lake, but we're not gonna stay attached to the ferry. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. After the last gates opened, we had again arrived in the Pacific, ready to embark on another ocean crossing. You just got your last full night's sleep for a month. Oh my gosh, seriously? Seriously. There's no internet connection.
we're off. 30 days at sea. We got some pretty good winds right now. We got uh, making about seven and a half knots. The new precision main is up. It looks beautiful. The, the precision general is up. It looks beautiful. So let's hope the winds stay with us for about five, six, seven, eight hundred miles. That'd be good. This is the sail that ripped that you saw a couple episodes back and they fixed it in Shelter Bay. Hopefully he sewed it up. Precision Sales is also sending us a whole new sail as well. So we'll have two float away sails and still we, we have Old Blue still. So. Feels like nothing. No, it does. It's yeah. actually almost six knots. Yeah. We were going fast. Has it's the wind like died a little? Yeah. Was it oh, 11? Yeah, now it's the heat. <laughs> mm. I say we stop and swim. Me too. I say we took glasses over. Yeah. All right, I got some fresh tomatoes, some fresh cilantro, and some red onion. So I'm going to make some pico de gallo, maybe some nachos, maybe some burritos. Vegetables and bread are probably the hardest thing to keep on on a boat. You get them right when you set off and then they last a week or so. I try to freeze as much bread as I can. Having an extra freezer is great because you never know when the, the power's gonna go out or something is gonna happen and your freezer's gonna thaw. You're gonna wake up to thawed meat and thawed ice cream. Stopped working last night. Yeah, I woke up this morning and everything's thawed and kind of warm. So I gotta cook steaks today and chicken. I don't think you can refreeze this stuff. I don't think stuff. you can. Because you better make sure it gets refrozen. I don't mind cooking it. We okay. don't have to eat it all today. I just... I know, but we've got two weeks before we're in some more. I know. Two weeks. Oh boy. It's so disheartening because all that food that you had planned, you've gotta cook now, throw out, eat now, whatever. Um, so now we have dolphins. Okay, I'm gonna go look at dolphins. But now we have the Dometic. Uh, Dometic makes a fantastic freezer. It runs on uh, uh, DC power. We actually have three freezers, and one of them is can be a fridge or freezer. So right now it's a fridge for me. But if something else starts to go wrong, then I can stuff all the cold stuff into my fridge freezer and just turn it down so that it's a freezer freezer. Okay, I gotta go look at dolphins. One's gonna come up and jump. They've done it like three times now. Okay. All right, now I'm back. Cilantro is what makes it good. And I put extra onions in there for you, Heather, and 
Jeff and Reese. That's a That's, big salad. This pico de gallo is not a salad. It's dip for the chips. I want some. I don't have jalapenos, so it's not going to be spicy. It's just going to be regular. Oh, yeah, you can that looks good. Awesome. Get those Tostitos right there. Zuko's been very curious about the birds, but he hasn't ventured off the boat yet. Zuko. Look at me. Yes. <laughs> Queen. It's a picture of a picture of a picture. Is that? Hey, would you back I'm off? Just... Look in. We don't usually worry about sharks when we're swimming out in the ocean. We definitely keep an eye out, and I know a lot of you have had concerns about sharks, but we haven't ever seen any on the couple of random times that we stop and cool off and clean the hull. It's really therapeutic to take about a half hour or so just to play and swim and shake off some of the passage blues. And scraping the hull free of barnacles and moss gives us a little bit less drag and therefore a little bit more speed. We're being stalked by what we think is pirates. I can't see. I'm trying to look at the pirates, but you're standing there. Up there. It could be a pirate. We don't know. Or. Or it could just be a boat. It could just be a boat. But we were looking at it through the binoculars, and it's really sketchy, and they don't have AIS. And they've been following us for like, how long have they been following us? Like two hours? Two or three hours. Did you turn change course, and yeah. they change their course? Yeah, I changed course, and they changed course. They followed us. What if there's a Tara fans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> but see, you know what we should do? Is change course again. There they are. So they don't have AIS, so this B&G on the radar has a thing where you can track targets. You turn the radar on, you put the cursor on the target, and the radar and the computer tracks that target. And that's what we're doing now, is we're tracking it because that, that vessel... Woo! I love that sound! What happened? Love that! Did you hear that? The engine died. Engine died, we got pirates coming towards us. Oh. Did it overheat? What did it do? They sabotaged us from a mile away. Is that really e and P. Weird? That's what I was going to say! Oh, that's rudder. <laughs> Thank 
you. We're Chicken evading pirates or Zatara fans or just a fishing boat that's uh, out here fishing and we're paranoid Americans thinking we're getting attacked. Of course, over ground now is 233. Ours is 215. I don't know why he changed course to more of an intercept, but he didn't pick up speed. He's still 428. Are you sure that radar is accurate? Yeah. You think he's waiting until nighttime to attack us at night? No, I don't think so. Of course, over grounds 220, 219 again. That must have just been a wave. Oh. Uh, he's just rolling in the waves. That's, that's he's just trying to avoid that storm over there, I would think. What did uh, Elysian say? Did they see him? Yeah. Or are they way back it's there? It's better, he said, uh, it's better if we are closer. Do you want to slow it up and let me catch up? Yeah. They wouldn't attack two boats together. Exactly. That's why we're buddy boating. Yeah, yeah. but they're like eight miles behind us. Well, they're not. I think I'm, I am. I'm going to turn, turn out. Circle back around. That's a good idea. Yeah! You need to put the sail down. No. Go, Captain Phillips, go! Yeah, they're going the other way. Maybe they know we're circling. Because why else would we change course so randomly? Because yeah. they could tell we have a sail out, so obviously we have to utilize the angle of the wind. So if we like turn randomly off the right angle, then they're going to be like, oh, they're doing something sketchy, like avoiding us. Yeah. And he's going in the opposite direction. So he's fine. He's just going the other way. He's already way over there. He's just we might as well get close to Elysium just to be safe. Well, yeah. I like that idea. Hey, Zatai, Zatai, the Philippian. Hey, brother. How are you doing, Kevin? Yeah, I don't know if that was uh, a pirate boat or not. I just didn't like how he, every time I turn, it seemed like he would turn and, and just kind of ghost me, but I don't know. I'm probably paranoid. Probably just some good fishermen. Yeah, but it's better to be safe than sorry. We had our doubts about him as well. It was, uh, he was acting quite strange. Well, the good news now is that we're together, and so if he comes back, I can outrun you, and I'll make all the important phone calls to the Army, National Guard, whoever, to get help out here for you. Always the gentleman, Keith. That's what I love about you. <laughs> I learned that trick from your son, Mayo. Who says, get me out of the water first. <laughs> yeah, he'll stamp over anyone to get out of the water. <laughs> Are we back on course? We're fixing to be. So what's our CAG now? I don't, I don't know. Let me see what the wind's doing. I, I think I think we got to stay on that two, 210 till, till the winds shift to the... To the south, so we can get a good beam reach across them, or at least a close haul across them. Look at that. How's everybody doing there? Everybody sick? Well, oh, everyone's great at the moment. Um, a couple were starting to feel a bit queasy earlier on, but they're all uh, they bounced back now. I think uh, seeing the Z machine has added a little bit of uh, spark again. Oh, good. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to run that starboard engine. Yeah. yeah, we're making a total of three knots over ground now with just the poor engine. We took a few days off to begin the passage. Back to school. And back, back to, to school. school. Don't know if I'll be quiet. I got my boots. Jack is not back to school, as huh? you can tell, because oh, we threw him over. He's still asleep. He went to bed at 6 a.m., which is like two hours ago. Three I'm hours ago. So we have this hideous current going against us, plus the wind. We're going into the wind, into the current. So we're making a whopping four knots. It's been Actually, like that. the wind's at a not horrible it's angle. It's not bad, but it's been pretty straight on yeah, us. Yeah, I know. Last yeah. night we were going right into it. We were going like three knots. I know. I don't know how we're ever going to get to where we're going at this rate. We picked the only and the strongest current in the Pacific to go yeah. against. Uh-oh. If he goes over, you're going to... Oh, my God. You're gonna... Oh, my gosh. Oh, Captain. Oh, no, no, please don't. Zuko, come here, kitty, kitty. <laughs> He's like so down low. <laughs> that one's coming back. Oh, no, 
As we turned west toward the Galapagos and the wind and the current moved more to our port side beam, we got a little more speed and much calmer waters over the next several days. Make sure, hey Finn, make sure everything's clipped on good. The sky cleared and the sun came out, which was fantastic for improving morale and boosting crew attitudes. Tune in next week as we continue the journey. Only three weeks and 32,000 miles to go. <laughs> Only 3,200 miles to go.